Let's open to Genesis chapter number 15. And verse 6 only. We will take our reading. Then we will move to Romans again. Kind of wanting, repeating and repeating as per a man, Abraham. From New King James Version I'm reading. And he believed in the Lord. That is Genesis chapter 15 verse 6. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for what? Righteousness. Let's move to Romans again, chapter 4. They are from verse 17. Please, I wanted to read from no King James, but I'm reading from the King James itself now. Verse 17 says, At his reading, I have made thee the father of many nations, before him who he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, and called those, to those things which are not as though they were. Who against or believed in hope that he but become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall their seed be. Verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about an a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he strengthened not, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he, has, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. The same verse we read in Genesis. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised, raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Verse 25 says, who was delivered for us offenses and was raised again for our justification. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the gift of your word. Speak unto us divinely in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we are dealing with a very interesting topic. Faith works. Faith works. I'm standing here as a product of faith. All my living, I've been living by faith. I started by faith. Actually, when I lost my parents at a tender age, I was going through by faith. Every step I take, I believe God. And once I will sit down and begin to listen to God, as soon as the Lord will whisper unto me, even though it wasn't very clear, as I would just peep my eyes to look in the future on the road where the Lord will instruct me to take a step, but I will believe God. There are some issues that I believe God in it, and I stick, I, I, it was as if I was I stick in my neck. By the time I went to, to my first uh, course in the, uh, in the A level, I, I went there believing. I had an admission, I got an admission. I did not have anything. But I, I believed that I was resuming. Then I went in to scout for some labor work in the site. Get some labor work. Just got half of my school fees. As far back as 1992, the whole semester was 162 naira. 
162 naira wasn't easy to come by at that time. Now, I think is it up to a rope or bridge? <laughs> That's how it was. Then I packaged my things. I said, I'm going. I wasn't able to lay hand on all those things. I said, please, God, I know you are sending me to school. Let me go. That's how I packed and went. When I went there, life wasn't easy. I was throughout living my fate. I went for FCS. We were crapping our hands. People were dancing. I was busy thinking about how I will get my accommodation, and how I will pay my school fees, how I will get my, my transport, transporting myself to one campus to the other for my lectures. Why message was going on, I was busy thinking about all those things. So the second fellowship, the FCS came, uh, president came out and whispered to me, please, brother, I want to speak to you. The Lord spoke to me that you came back in a tight condition. I said, yes, sir. He said, follow me to the hostel. I followed him to the hostel. Then he removed an envelope. I said, take it. When I opened the envelope, ha, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, and I counted them out to 1,000. I mean, 200 naira. That was the year that the 200 naira came out. I can't believe I say, say, let me, let me bath so that I will clear my eyes to come and count it again. Went to the bathroom and I bathed. Came back and recounted the money. It was still 1,000. Ah, I ran into my room and said, please help me count this money. When he count and finish, he said, it's 1,000. Ah, now, wow. And that's how it started. And that's how I went on and on and on and on. That interested me when I was living by faith. And one was looking at men who were, who were professing faith. Men at like Kenan Hagen, Kenneth Copeland, or a rabbit. When I was reading their book, they energized me, they encouraged me. I'd keep on looking on to the Lord. By that, when, in fact, that's where I made Kenneth Hagen to be my friend. When I went on reading the books of Kenneth Hagen, Kenneth Copeland, and when I read the testimony of Robert, all of them, all were talking about fathers of faith. In fact, he was turned father of faith. Publicly, the patriarch Abraham was associated as a man who stood by faith right from the beginning. But when I was studying my scriptures, I went back as far as Noah, who believed God. The first thing that never happened, the only thing that never happened in the world before, the Lord said, go and make an ark. I'm going to destroy the whole world by the flood. Nobody could believe. Look at the whole world. Noah went about to make some disciples, make them to believe that the world is going to end. There's coming to be an end of the whole world. Nobody could believe him. By the act of faith, he went on to make the ark for 120 years. Nobody followed him. Nobody followed him. Nobody could believe him. Some people tell him as a mad person. Where do you see river? How do you think the whiteness of the wall of this 40 days rain can destroy and feed the whole earth? Why do you believe useless things like this? He believed on what God told him and he held on to it, stood by it, waited by it until the flood came. Some people are told us until when they see it before they believe. Until when they see it. Even when they say, please, go and do this, Lord. There's no evidence. How? How? The Gideons. You know, Gideons always ask for an evidence. I want, I want a proof. Why, why, why do I want a proof? The Gideons. I want a proof, Lord. Yes, I want to. Yes, I want to obey, but I, I need a proof. And what makes Abraham to believe as a father of faith? We are talking about the father of faith. Is obeying unquestioningly. He never questioned. Once Baba speak, Abraham say, once I hear from you, you that never make mistake, you that will never lead a man astray, you that will never do this, you created us in your image, and you created us for a purpose, 
and you have your purpose in every man. So once you speak, mean it is obey. I know where you're going to take me, I believe. And Abraham followed. Abraham followed. And when I was reading my scriptures, to a point to where the Bible crowned the belief of Abraham and said, you, every nation will be blessed in you. Every person that cares you will be caged. And you have become the father of all, faith, all the faithfuls. When God asked him at the age of 100 years, when he gave birth to his only son, Isaac, go and make the sacrifice with him. But before we get there, brothers and sisters, I want to draw something very quickly to us this morning. When you believe God and you want to walk with the Lord and you're working with the Lord and you are passing through other situations, when you are getting through close to your breakthrough, you need to be very careful. The enemy will arise to hinder your breakthrough, to have it not done. The issue of Abraham, whom we are calling the father of faith, do you know that God promised him at the age of 75? And Isaac was to come at the age of 100 years. At 99, the enemy stood, stood in. Said, this Isaac who must hear that is coming. Then he whispered to his wife, said, please, go and tell your husband, this Isaac should not come. Even if Isaac will come, God prepared Isaac to be alone. No competition in Isaac. But let me bring somebody who will come and compete with Isaac. Go and tell him to, to go through Agai so that Ishmael will come. Then he will come first. So even when Isaac will come, he will be under Ishmael. One year to the fulfillment of God's promises to Abraham. If you are working with the Lord, be careful. Closing, getting closer to your breakthrough. The enemy will arise against you. Guys, do you know that many guys missed up? When the years were getting closer to a breakthrough, the enemy will come and whisper unto them, you are getting matured. Why are you just sitting like this? Arise! Enter into the town. Any man you caught, get hold of him. God will say, yeah. Don't you know that 24 years are gone? At 25 years, my promises were to fulfill it. Why are you going through Hagar again? Why are you bringing in Ishima inside this house again? Don't you believe me? Get in close to your breakthrough. Be very careful. The enemy will bring so many things on your heart. He will come and whisper so many things on your heart. But unbelief, unbelief, if you can hold on to the Lord who has spoken on to you, and you know that he can do it, and he can even do it more abundantly and effectively, please, you will shift to a ground. And once you ship to your ground and Ishmael will come in, it take the message of God again to clear your road for Isaac to sit comfortable. And Isaac is the promised man. Don't you know that some of you will fall in the hands of men which just two years God will say this is the man. We went and fall in the hands of some boys, some kids. Which, if you are waiting for some little time, God will say, this is the man. Some of you, you toy and you toy and you toy and you toy and you toy. When the Lord wants to grant you a breakthrough, say, this is too much. Let me find my way through. Let me find my way through. Getting close to your breakthrough. You need to be very careful. You need to be very careful. The enemy will draw closer onto you, to your friends, to your closets, and will begin to whisper some useless things to you. When Ishmael will come, you will find trouble. Even when the Lord, the blessed Isaac, will come into your life, 
there will be trouble struggling to put Isaac away, to pick Ishmael away. Do you remember? Not only in the issue of marriage, can't you know that there are some issues that you keep on struggling with it? How many times do you write your wife? Then now you want to bring in Ishmael to stand for you, to, raise, to lay a foundation for you to go forward. Because you are getting, you are getting stricken in years. Getting too old in years. Who told you? God had made you. Know when he will grant you success. And he will t- allow you to enjoy your success. Didn't Abraham enjoy Isaac? He enjoyed the presence of Isaac. Don't allow Ishmael to take the position of Isaac. Even though when Isaac will come, there will be trouble. There will be trouble. At the age of 99, when Abraham entered the age of 100 years, one year to his own breakthrough, when Ishmael came, when Isaac came inside, there was trouble. Because the enemy planted him there for a purpose. Hallelujah. The enemy planted him there for a purpose. To destroy everything that Abraham, you know, everything that doesn't come by the promises of God, it will never last longer. It will never last longer. It comes only to destroy you and to go away. Why are we having so much, so much problem now? Is it not because of Ishmael? Call Ishmael or whatever you call him. Look at what we are passing through now. Just one year, had it been Abraham, can only set to his heart. But one thing that God said, I love you, Abraham. I love you, Abraham, was that at the time that God told Abraham, yes, Ishmael is older than Isaac, send him away. After sending him away, there was no alternative again. God say, out of no alternative, Call it this boy. Go to Maria. Offer him as a sacrifice. Then that is why he giddled everything. He said, we're going now. We're going. I say, when they went, arriving at the place where God told him, Pandolazik, put everything together. Then God say, don't touch him all. Don't touch him just go through your Genesis chapter 22, all about Abraham. When you worship God and you love your possession too much, it's an act of unbelief. You worship him and you love your possession too much. Even when God is speaking, he said, this one, this one, this one, I remember one thing. When Mahama Gandhi became the prime minister of India. Then Christians went to, 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 to sit together with him and they congratulate him. He saw them as he said, Mahama Gandhi say, I love Christ, but I hate you Christians. Say, I love Christ, but I hate you Christians. Say, why? Say, had they been you emulate your father Abraham? Look at your churches in India. Look at how tattered your churches are. And when you will move down and go to your estates, see how you build your estates. I love Christ, but I hate you, Christian. Mahatma Gandhi says so. Loving our possessions. And who gave it those possessions? He that gave it command, the second command. When he enriched a man with a resource, with certain resource, he Wait for another command. When God has given you, be eating and be listening again. There's another command going to come. And that command is the command that when you act on that command of faith, the Lord will lift you up and give you another name, Father of Faith. The Lord will lift you high. The reason why most of all can, God cannot lift us up with just remain where God has lifted us and placed us as stage one. But we look at it, it's a place 
where others have not attained. So we think we have arrived. No. That is stage one. Act of a God is going to speak again. God wants to speak again. When he speaks and you arise and begin to act, it's not easy. Uh, at the age of 100, Ishmael has gone already. Ishmael has gone already. Only Isaac is remaining. This one also God said, give me. Go and slaughter him. Go and slaughter him. The last one, then quickly my mind runs to a woman in the scriptures. When Jesus went into the temple and was preaching, and this woman said, please come and render your offerings. Come and render your offerings. So people were come with thousands and millions, and this woman, wretched as he was, he came with his own, how can I translate a nini? <laughs> Two. Two pennies. Let me call it like that. But you cannot know pennies now even. Come and drop them, say, this woman, an act of faith. Everybody we talk about, we hear about you. Act of faith. Act of faith. Lack of faith is bringing men down. Bringing us down. When the Lord will set a stage, and when you come only the first stage of it, you think it is okay. It is okay. Abraham wouldn't have been blessed to the point that we call him the father of faith. I was wondering, do you know that lack of faith make Esau, Esau, Esau miss it? Do you remember that when Abraham, I me mean Isaac, was saying, go, make a delicacy for me. Bring it for me. Let me eat and bless you. Wasn't Abraham rich? What make Esau not to run into Abraham's ships? Catch one. Come on, slaughter. Who did Jacob went? Did he went to the bush? Eh? Are you not following me? Did Jacob went to the bush? Esau went into the bush. Abraham was so rich. I mean, the inheritance that Isaac inherited from his father. The richness of Isaac was almost surpassing the, that of his father. Because all the words that Abraham dug, Isaac went and recovered all those words. So he was almost getting richer than Abraham. But when he wanted to bless Esau, so missed mm -hmm. it. For the way there Abraham is presence, was such a man there is power that to do no go to the market before he will come and entertain visitors. Trusting you for a miracle, Father, Isaac was such a man. Look at that three people came in the mighty name he of Jesus. Just entered into the house. The Bible says he just went into the house, caught a cow, killed it, come and supply. Just everything was in abundance. Isaac inherited those possessions. Unbelief. When he say. Prepare me delicacy. I will take and bless you. He missed it. Went into the bush. Went into the bush. Ah, why are you wondering? Why your father's house is full of everything? Why are you going to the bush? Why are you going to, why are you going to look for in the bush? Jacob would arise and say, get into your father's ship. Anyone you find is fitting. Tender. Bring it. We prepare such a delicacy for you, then you will take it to your father. That's how this will be. Why are you wondering? Because of unbelief. Unbelief has rendered so many people into so many issues. I lead so many people into so many issues. I miss it because of unbelief. I miss it because of unbelief. Only I could believe and say, yes, sir. My father, what you have said is exactly what I'm going to do. Before we come back into this, con to talk about Abraham to a conclusion, is I always ask Christians, do you believe that there is heaven and there is hell? Many Christians, even as we preach as we preach, most of us we don't believe that there is heaven and there is hell. And there is standard set for everything. Standard of going to heaven. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Standard going to, and God will never lower the standard. As it was in the time of Moses. As it was in the time of Elijah and Elisha. 
As it was in the time of Joshua, Caleb, and, and others. As it was in the time of Joseph, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. As it was in the time of Noah, the standard cannot be lowered. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Only if you can believe. This is our manual. This is our manual. If you want to operate where? This is our manual. Who are you getting the knowledge to operate this one? Unbelief. People go to verses that you cannot even find them from the scriptures. Unbelief. I was saying that you know that unbelief makes people to, to practice Christianity or defense. Say, believe it or not, I'm a Christian. Ah. Ah. Believe it or not, that is defense. Unbelief. Abraham believed. And whatever God, whatever command that God gave to him, say, yes, sir, I'm going to obey. And he made him the father of faith. Say, Abraham, you are a prototype. All believers we follow. Let's bring it to the New Testament. When we are talking about the father of faith, you know, a father is a person who knows this. Who knows this? Who live an exemplary life? Who cares? Whom his children typed his blessings. And even his knowledge. If your father, and if you are very careful at home, do you know that your wife, and you, as you mean that you read accounting, and your wife is reading medicine, don't you know that when it comes to the issue of settling some issues, he will come and ask you, please, daddy, how can I, am I going to settle all those things? He will come and say, please, help me this one now. My wife is a medical personnel. I don't, I don't, I didn't do any, nothing, I don't, nothing close to medical. When he was about writing some words, he come and ask me some terminologies. I would go to the, <laughs> say, please, how can I understand all this? Say, you are a father. You need to know, know all those things. A father is a person who people look after. They believe, and they say, this one, he knows everything. He knows everything. And you got that. You bring them together. It's if the father's faith is not strong. Your house. That's how it will be. God has made us now as disciples. And we need to make more disciples. To bring them unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? Do you know that professing Christ, preaching Christ now. It's becoming a shameful thing. Then I remember what Muhammad Gandhi said. I love Jesus. Who preaches season and out of season. But your own. Your Christian life has season. This one. Why are you talking about Christianity here? Does anything matter about Christianity here? Why are you bringing Christ here? Why do you want to prick my conscience? Leave Christ matter there. When we go to church. Then we talk about Christ. He said, I love Christ. Who can practice faith in season and out of season? Abraham is made a father of faith. Father of faith who can believe everything. Everything. Right from on set. Do you know he was brought out and missed worshiping under, under uh, politeism. That is, the, that is the home where Abraham came from. To monetize him. From politeism to monetizing. And nobody in the teller's house was a believer before. Nobody in teller's house. Nobody in his family heard about God. The living Yahweh before. But Abraham heard the voice of God. And he knew that somebody, a strange voice, supernatural voice, the omnipotent voice is speaking somewhere. Yes, I'm going to obey. I'm going to follow you. Brothers and sisters, we are in the situation now that if you cannot hold on to your faith, that's how your faith will keep on lingering. Hallelujah. Because of this notice. <laughs> that's how your faith will keep on lingering. Because we are in the situation. Everything we do is as if we have laid aside faith. I have mentioned issues. 
men in seven things that will read about them. I read one of them that just died recently. Our brother Rehan Banke, how he became a wonderful preacher the whole world. It was by faith. Faith! Begin to revive your faith now. Say, my faith will work for me. And my faith will work for me. I will obtain everything in a legitimate way. In the correct way that the Lord wants me. Don't, 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 don't linger out. Please don't waver. Don't st 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 stand by your own feet. No matter what it is. No matter, no matter what it is. The end thereof, you will see the result. Only you can stand and exercise your faith. Say, so by faith, it's going to do this. We're going to, we, we, as I was saying at the beginning of our service, I was saying that we're going to have our vigil of praise and thanksgiving. Because this year, we're looking at the Lord. The Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. And we will see how the mercy has taken us through and how we still play with the Lord for the remaining of the year. How the mercy we accomplish that which is still remaining. We believe God that no time is late for him. No time is late for him. Are you hearing me? No time is late for him. Talk about her now. Your unbelief has taken you to so many fake prophecies. Prophets. Your unbelief has taken you to so many witches. Just because the Lord has promised you it's not yet been done. Wait. Wait. Wait and keep on believing on him, my brother and my sister. God is visiting you this day in the name of Jesus Christ. Just believe him. Believe him. You are head condition. Believe God. All oh, this one I'm talking about can I because I had challenge. Believe him. Believe him. Who says that by his stripes we are healed? And he will bless us in, our, in his riches. Believe him. Believe him. And don't keep, don't hide your resources for him. Bring it to him. It's a stepping stage. He's just giving you a little to test you so that he will bless you more. Please, the father of faith. There are fathers of faith now. I want God to make me the father of faith. Abraham's generation has come and gone. Now, in the 21st century, father of faith. All of them. In Nigeria, he has one man that excites faith. Bring his brains in the house we heard about him, who excites faith, who his life was living after Kenan Hagin, who was emulating Kenan Hagin, living after Kenan Hagin's life, exciting faith. All of, I want to be the father of faith now, in the 21st century. When we're talking about father of faith, it's as if women are being said that his father, father in the Lord, there's no gender. Discrimination. What's to say, Father? You are a father too. You are a father. Praise the Lord. The Lord help us. The Lord help us. So that we we, 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 we believe in God. We will believe in God and we stand believing in Him. Sing this song for me. Standing on the promises of God. Once then we will close. Sorry. Standing it. on the promises of Christ, my King, to eternal ages, let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Stand on the promises of God.